Uh, I know for a fact loves a good hashtag. Mike McCarthy, good morning to you. Morning, season's greetings, lads. All is well in the world? Very good, thanks very much. Thanks for having me. No, it's a delighted to have you on, and we're going to get your uh, thoughts on, you're going to do the uh, second row depth chart first. We've been going through all these positions over the last little while, and we'll continue it into the uh, Six Nations. I do have a sneaking suspicion as to who number one on that uh, depth chart might be, uh, Mike, but we will we will get to that in just a little bit. You might be surprised. <laughs> really? Yes. Oh, I'm intrigued now. All um, to be revealed soon, though. I'm, uh, your bromance with Dev really is what's leading me to believe that he's 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 in there at number one. But um, he's dropped on the pecking order. Don't oh, we? right. Okay. Okay. Well, stay tuned for that, uh, viewers. Um, Leinster Toulouse uh, tomorrow, Mike, one o'clock. Um, a game that's going to be live and off the ball. Sexton is out. We've just been obviously picking over this over the last twenty four hours. The news that he's <coughs> out. Ross Byrne. Uh, will come in and uh, take over that position. He's obviously a good player, Ross Byrne, with a huge future ahead of him, but you assume that uh, from Leo Cullen and uh, Stuart Lancaster's point of view, losing a player of the quality of Sexton, like, no matter who comes in, it changes the game plan, right? Yeah, 100%. I mean, first of all, it's how exciting is it? Four, the four times winners versus the four times winners. But, um, yeah, it's replacing the world player of the years you know Johnny Sexton is irreplaceable but if you do ha if you do want to have someone stepping in it's Ross Byrne you know he's been his understudy for three years he's uh, he's learned from the best and we've seen how he steps up we saw last season where he stepped in in the semi-final uh, of the Pro 14 against Munster uh, he played the two Montpellier games and you know what Ross Byrne brings is he's, he's cool calm collective he's brought that fiery confidence that um uh, maybe he had to grow a bit, obviously learning that from Sex Sexto himself. But uh, you know, Ross Byrne certainly can control the game. He'll he'll put the lads in the right areas of the field, um, and he's got a real rugby brain. He'll make the really really good decisions. So, uh, you know, while it's obviously hugely disappointing not to have Johnny Sexton, there's there's no better person to to step in and, and fill his boots. Uh, the only thing you would have liked to have maybe seen is is for uh, Ross Byrne to have played. Uh, it's last week against Ulster, yeah. I think the reason he obviously didn't play was because they they had a sense Johnny Sexton was struggling with that calf injury. So um, Kieran Frawley got that um, game time to kind of uh, wrap up Ross Byrne in in, in 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 bubble wrap for for this game coming up. So, but yeah, um, no, no no one better to step in and fill the boots. Yeah, and Frawley as well might be required to come in for the last ten or fifteen minutes and see the game home. So maybe that worked on all fronts. Is Sexton just fine on this one briefly, Mike? Is he? <laughs> going to be involved do you think uh, over the last week or 10 days I mean does he step totally away because he does strike me as a sort of character who's at the forefront of implementing whatever the coaching plan uh, would be is he still involved do you think um, well it, I, I'm sure he'll be helping Ross Byrne in terms of uh, getting clarity around of you know exactly what he needs to do and you know without being too pushy or you know sticking his nose and he'll, he'll be there to support support the team and support Ross Byrne if, if, if they should need that help and um, but, you know, as equally, uh, you know, there's, there was a concern, I'm not sure whether he is or he isn't, of, of Dev Toner playing as well. And, you know, for me, Dev Toner is equally uh, a big loss. Uh, yes, James Ryan and... Um, and um, Scott Fardy. Scott Fardy, sorry. Uh, ah, brilliant people to step in. But, you know, we've seen, we've seen what Dev brings when, um, to the team. He, he, he gives that foundation of, of, of platform, of set piece, which... Allow, it's the concrete and gelling of the team which allows the rest of the team to, to perform well. So, you know, hopefully we'll see Dev on that team sheet because he, he to me, he's as important to having the team as, as Johnny Sexton. Yeah, like potentially missing those couple of players, Carney, Henshaw, and yeah. in the light, obviously, of the recent blip. Are you concerned, particularly with the, the Munster result, are you concerned by that blip and the impact that that might have uh, on where Leinster are at tomorrow? Yeah, I just... I, <laughs> They haven't hit top form. I mean, they've been a little bit rusty. And, you know, when you look at that Toulouse side, and they, I think since they beat Leinster the last time, they've, they haven't lost in 12 games. They've won 11 and drawn one. Uh, they've got a lot of co cohesion and togetherness. That's something Leinster maybe at this stage don't have because of the chopping and changing of the teams week in, week out. So we, we kind of saw that a, a bit against Munster. Uh, yeah, hugely disappointing for the guys, uh, Leinster boys against Munster. But, um, you know, when you think they're playing most of the game, most of the game with 14 men, um, yeah, they they may be a little bit rusty and may lack a little bit of cohesion going into this game. It seems like an odd time of the year to get rusty, Mike, doesn't it? Like I think, fair enough, in the opening stages of the Champions Cup, that's acceptable. Why do you think they're rusty in the middle of the season when, if anything, maybe they could be tired? But I wouldn't have thought they would be rusty. 
Well, I, I'm not sure the rusty is the right word, but I mean, I, I, I don't think they've hot, hit top gear, which I think is possibly a good thing. I mean, mm. losing against Munster will uh, refocus the minds. That's the way they'll be looking at it. They'll they'll uh, they'll they'll really be looking hard at you know where they can be better. They won't be coming into this game uh, in, in a relaxed mood. No, the, the, you know, notoriously over the last couple of seasons, Leinster have not been hitting top gear uh, at this point in the season. So uh, to be in the position they're in doing as well as they are in the Pro 14, to be doing as well as they are in the Champions Cup. Uh, I, I can only see them <clears throat> moving up the gears um, after this and you know, having a, having a great run in as, as they did last season. If we look back on the, the France leg, Mike, like the obviously famously slow out of the blocks and you know, allow Toulouse to build up a phenomenal lead, almost of more concern for me was the fact that they got, Leinster got back to 27-21 and couldn't close yeah. the game out in a way that like last season, we really would have seen them doing that quite a bit. What's your thought on the Leinster product this season versus where they were at last season? Is it a lesser product now? Yeah, well, <clears throat> like you mentioned there, the, the last 10 minutes, Leinster were leading and that try, the intercept, um, you know, it wasn't just any old intercept. I think Stuart Lancaster has alluded to that during the week, the fact that this is a French team that has done their analysis, they've done their homework, they've seen that play before and... Uh, it just shows, you know, most French sides maybe wouldn't go into the detail of analysis that, uh, you know, they would in the, the Premiership or in Ireland. But you really saw that they'd, they'd, they'd looked at uh, how Leinster play and, and saw that was a pre-rehearsed move and that's how they got the intercept. But, you know, for Toulouse, what Leinster are going to have to be careful with and maybe improve on slightly what w with where they've been uh, currently this season is, is respecting the ball, looking after the ball. This Toulouse team score over half their tries from turnover ball. Mm. They're, they're, they're phenomenally dangerous against um, a dis, disorganised defence. So um, that's going to be a big work on for, for the Leinster team is to, to keep hold of the ball for longer periods of time and respect the ball, not give it up cheaply because we know how dangerous, how quick those, those Toulouse backs are. Um, another thing that Lens will have to be really strong in is discipline. We saw against Munster, the discipline w was really poor. Um, you know, you, you have bad discipline against Toulouse. They kick to the corner, they've got a humongous pack, uh, and they dr just drive malls against you. So, you know, those two areas are key areas uh, which Lens are going to have to, you know, do really well on um, come one o'clock on, on Saturday. Yeah, for sure. And just on that first point, in terms of holding on to the ball, Mike, is your sense this season that Leinster have been more risky than they have been last year and are giving the ball away more cheaply or at least giving the opposition the opportunities to take the ball away from them a little bit more cheaply? Um, maybe two things. Maybe it's a bit, uh, a bit of overconfidence with, you know, with what, what, they, what they achieved last season, winning the double. Uh, you know, that brings a lot of confidence to the mind. And maybe they're, you know... Uh, a few more percent in terms of what they're trying out there, but the other one is that cohesion thing I, I mentioned to you before. You know, when you're not <clears throat> playing week in week in together, there's, you're chopping and changing the team. Um, it's it, it, it can certainly affect that side of things. So as I said, this point in the season going forward, I think there'll be more cohesion. There'll be a bit more of a settled team as the the bigger games uh, come thicker and faster. And I think you'll see that cohesion come uh, in the run up to the to, to, towards the end of the season. And Leinster to win tomorrow, Mike. Oh, Leinster's to win. Yeah, I mean, I think even if they don't, I think both teams will, will still go through. But it's that home quarter final, uh, one o'clock kickoff. We know French sides notoriously don't travel particularly well. One o'clock kickoff, an early kickoff, so a good start out the blocks for Leinster, and uh, you know I, I, I'm convinced it's, it's going to be a good win. But you know, interesting to see as well if Robbie Henshaw's involved because I heard he's been training during the week. Right. But um, you know, if he is to, if he is to step in, we've seen you know he can do it as well. We saw that injury against Italy where he did his shoulder. He came back and played um, in the semi-final of the Pro 14 against Scarlets, and you know he physically dominated that game. OK, that's the uh, game live, by the way, on Off the Ball for you tomorrow. As Mike says, it's underway from uh, 1 o'clock, so we'll be in there just before that. Uh, Gloucester Munster at King's Home this evening. I have to say, we were just saying earlier on how exciting it is to have a game of interest on a, on a Friday night. Uh, incredibly, Chris Farrell is fit and he starts their fourth favourites uh, for the tournament. Uh, Mike, with a couple of rounds to go on the pool stages, have you seen enough from Munster so far to believe that they can actually win this tournament? Well, 100% Munster uh, are, are always in with a shout, aren't they? I mean, uh, you know, for them going down to Gloucester, I think the main the main thing they'll be happy about is seeing there's no Cipriani. The, the drop-off in performance since Cipriani's been out in, in terms of their attack has been uh, pretty incredible. Gloucester, uh, 
you know, they had a heavy loss to sale a, a couple of weeks ago at home, uh, lost to Leicester there. So, you know, I think Munster will, go, will be going down with full confidence. They're, they're coming into the game with a, a bit of momentum, those two Interpro wins, beating Leinster um, at home and be, beating Connor away. Um, and, you know, their pack is looking looking really strong with, uh, you know, Klein and Tyburn in the second row. And um, <coughs> that, that back row is, is, is pretty phenomenal. So, you know, I think they'll, um, they, they went away and beat Exeter. So I, I believe they'll go away and beat Gloucester as well. Yeah, like the, the pack has been seriously impressive. There has been signs as well, certainly uh, in the game against Connacht, that that back line is starting to get things going as well. Andy Dunn was saying that perhaps Munster don't exactly know what they're all about in the backs just yet, but he was certainly more impressed with them over, over the last week. Are you the same? Are you starting to see a Munster identity when they're attacking? Yeah, I think um, they're incredibly frustrating to play against. They're, they're hugely physical. I think one area they, 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 they need to improve on is, is their attack. Uh, you know, if we look back to that um, game where Munster beat Leinster, uh, I think they scored, they scored two tries and those tries were their first in three games. And both those tries came from one was an intercept and one was from a driving mall. So, you know, that's... You know, every team has has work ons. We spoke there about Lens's work on is, is their dis- discipline and maybe uh, you know look, respecting the ball and looking after it slightly better. Uh, for Munster, they just need to improve their attack. And um, you know, if they can do that uh, with what they bring defensively and how frustrating they are to play against, um, they're, they're, they're going to be in a very good place going forward. Yeah, it's very fine margins, obviously, in this tournament. Do you think uh, and Munster can ill afford to lose? Obviously, it's in. What do you think in terms of their chances of getting it done over there? Sorry, are Munster going to win? Oh yeah, I think they're going to win. I think they'll, um, you know, I'm very confident they'll go down there and do a, do a job. And great to see Chris Farrell back after he mm. <coughs> after that bad knee injury he had, and um, you know, it looked like he was limping off the off the pitch after that Connor game. So I was delighted to see that news that he's he's fit and available to play. Yeah, it's incredible. Racing uh, uh, at Ulster is the other game at Belfast tomorrow at quarter past three. That's also live on off the ball.